Welcome to day three here at Farnborough. And while there's been a bit of a lull in aircraft orders, attention turns to what's happening inside these halls and there's plenty going on. Let's take a look. Come with me. We started today with huge news for Jekta. Seaplane Asia have agreed to order 14 Phase 100 amphibious aircraft from them for 2030. I brought up with the CEO of Jekta, George Alafinov, to find out a little bit more about this deal, about the challenges that they're going to face with bringing it to the commercial market and why the amphibious aviation sector is so exciting. Now when we're talking about an amphibian aviation, so an aircraft that can perform both on the existing path the runways and on the water, it suddenly allows for the opportunity to create a transport network where it was not possible before with minimal investment. You use what the nature has already given you, which is water. Therefore, all you need is water to start your operations and the aircraft itself. So this is all you need to start your operations and create the transport network to transfer goods and uh, passengers. A key topic that is part of many conversations on site is sustainability and some of the industry's biggest names discussed achieving net zero goals by 2050, if not sooner. VA told us they are making great strides already. We're routinely now operating sustainable aviation fuel and have been doing so into our Heathrow base for over two years now using Philip 66 fuel. We've now secured second and third generation sustainable aviation fuel from Lanzajet, which comes this year, alcohol to jet fuel. And next year, our partnership with 12, which is ESAF, so power to liquid SAF, coming into our aircraft as soon as next year. So that's huge transformation on sustainable fuel delivery. Elsewhere, KLM and Zero Avia announced they're working towards flight demonstrations using Zero Avia's hydrogen electric engines, with initial flight demonstrations planned between two airport locations as early as 2026. This is a partnership announcement around uh, getting the largest aircraft uh, to date um, uh, up in the sky on hydrogen electric, hydrogen fuel, fuel cell electric uh, propulsion system. And we at Zero Avia have done it with smaller aircraft a number of times, and now we're bringing it up to the next level and doing it with a partner like this, KLM, is uh, super exciting as well. At the other end of the scale, Boom has long promised supersonic flight, revealing a number of key milestones this week in the design of its aircraft. CEO and founder Blake Scholl says that the benefits of the overture will be widespread. There are going to be about 600 routes on the planet that are going to benefit from speed on Overture, where there is a significant speed up for passengers and profitable operation for airlines. So think about crossing the Atlantic in about three and a half hours. Think about crossing the Pacific. Uh, Tokyo, Seattle is four and a half hours. And some of the most painfully long flights in the world today, like Los Angeles to Sydney that today stretches for almost 15 hours, we'll be able to do that in about eight and a half. The wider industry is still grappling with a skills shortage post-COVID, but with recent advancements in AI, Nick Compton of EY is confident that will soon change. You'll hear the word modular an awful lot over these next few days, and a lot of the technology and aerospace and defence businesses are using this. So how do you break down complex systems and engineering challenges to their constituent parts and just work on those? So that means you can run them in parallel and be independent, and that speeds up things like upgrades. The other one you're going to hear a lot about is digital twin. Two things have changed. One is that there's more data coming off the systems than ever before and the ability to capture that data. The second is computing power. So take everything that's happened in the last 18 months alone with AI and computing power. That is being pointed at digital twin. That aids production schedules and efficiency but also not just in the factory. You can also now digital twin your entire supply chain, spot challenges before they arise, and solve them. By far the biggest attraction in the sky above Farnborough today was the B-52 flypast, which wowed spectators. Well, we're over halfway through the air show. Now with delegates taking the opportunity to mingle and relax, tomorrow we'll bring you all the latest innovations from GUAPS, which is taking place during the air show for the very first time. Cheers.